First at four, if you live or work in the city of Detroit, Mayor Duggan has some news for you. It's another COVID vaccine expansion, and Paula is tracking new research. I pull up my mask. Could this little ditty drive its way into your heart? My often washed hands. You get to vote on a new PSA push. I'll show you how. It's my shit. It has never been warmer in 2021 than it is right now, but will the temperatures go in the other direction by the end of the week? We'll check that out in a wet forecast too, right now, first at four. Local four news starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. That breaking news comes from Detroit's Mayor Mike Duggan. We're also tracking several developments surrounding the coronavirus. First at floor four here in Michigan. Today is already the first day of expanded eligibility for the COVID vaccine. We're getting new test results on a fourth vaccine candidate, this one from AstraZeneca. But first, Mayor Duggan announces new changes to eligibility in the city of Detroit that affects plenty of people in the suburbs as well. Let's bring in Kimberly Gill and Kim. We just heard from the mayor. We did, Karen. Good afternoon to you. Mayor Mike Duggan held a news conference about an hour ago. He hopes the expansion will protect more Detroiters as the city is seeing the numbers move in the wrong direction. So starting today, anybody 18 and older who lives in the city of Detroit is eligible to make an appointment for a vaccine at the TCF Center. This also applies to anyone who works in the city and is required to show up to a job site in Detroit. The city also expanding access to Detroiters 16 years of age and older with disabilities and underlying health conditions. The move comes as case positivity rates and hospitalizations across the city are on the rise. Mayor Duggan hopes more people will take advantage of being vaccinated. We are now closing in on 200,000 vaccines in this city. You're getting no reports of people having bad effects from the vaccines. But there are tragic consequences for those who don't get them. And this is going to continue to be the case. And it's important that you read out to folks who have been skeptical, accompany them, take them in, uh, because you may be saving a life. The mayor also announced the city's senior Saturday vaccination events will now be called Community Saturdays to reflect the broader eligibility. So, Karen, we're still just kind of sorting out the mayor's comments from today. We'll have more tonight when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. Until then, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Sure. The city of Clinton Township this afternoon is mourning the loss of its police chief. We're told he died from complications due to COVID-19. Police chief Fred Posovitz was 64 years old. He started his career with the Clinton Township Department nearly 41 years ago. He was planning to retire this June. We're talking to people in Clinton Township right now, and we'll have more on the chief's legacy when you join us at 6. The state of Michigan is seeing a big expansion in vaccine eligibility. Now anyone who's 50 or older is eligible for the COVID vaccine. So are people 16 and older who have pre-existing health conditions or disabilities. That's at the same time, the state is watching numbers of new cases closely on the lookout for another possible surge. Today, the state reports 4,800 new cases over the past two days, that number jumping last Monday's 3,100 cases. Plus, we have seen an additional six deaths. New research results could boost confidence in the fourth COVID vaccine candidate. This one from AstraZeneca. Trials in the United States, Chile, and Peru showed it was 79% effective in preventing symptomatic illness. Also, here's another important number. It was 100% effective against severe or critical disease. Now, this large trial also did not identify any safety concerns, including no increased risks of blood clots. Many European countries hit the brakes with the distribution after those concerns were raised. This is a step toward emergency use authorization in the U.S. in the coming weeks. Several members of Michigan's congressional delegation got their first look at the state's first mass vaccination site. Members of Congress and Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist received a guided tour of Ford Field as it is converted into a medical facility for the next eight weeks. The site officially opens Wednesday. New at 5, some members of Congress admit they thought about skipping the vaccine. What they ended up doing and why. Well, spring is definitely sprung. Temperatures are in the 60s. Can we keep it going through the week? Let's get a sneak peek at the first forecast with Ben. It's gorgeous out there. It is, Karen. We'd love to continue this, and we may tomorrow. Uh, and then things start to go south in a hurry as we head towards the end of the week. But temperatures did make it to 70 
It's really the third time this year that that's happened. It's a possibility we did set a record at least uh, for the warmest temperature of the year so far, but it will be in between hours. We won't know that till 430. Otherwise, temperatures upper 60s and that strong south wind really helping the cause. Rain not too far off. We can see some of it there in Chicago and starting to work its way into Lake Michigan. We're not expecting that until tomorrow, but it's the first of three rounds in seven days that we're staring at. Also looking at gusting winds towards the end of the week and the temperatures only sliding downhill. We'll tell you how fast in just a few minutes. Karen. All right. Thank you, Ben. We do have a tragic update to a story that we've been following. A 15 year old girl has died after being shot in Clawson. It was a tense situation in the neighborhood on 14 Mile near Main Street in Washington. Police say the teenager was shot by her stepfather, who then barricaded himself inside his home. The girl was rushed to the hospital but died from her injuries. Police say her stepfather also shot himself and died. A judge will soon decide if three men charged with the death of a Van Buren Township woman will stand trial. Charges were filed late last year against Timothy Moore, Shane Evans, and Shandon Groom in the death of Egypt Covington. The 27-year-old was found shot to death inside of her home back of June 2017. In court today, Covington's boyfriend recalled the day he found her body as he followed the dog through the house. He couldn't believe what he saw. By then, I, I followed and he was into the kitchen and maybe just another step or two and into the living room and that's where Egypt was laying. Okay. Uh, was she responsive at all? No. Did you notice she had any injuries to her? I, I could see blood. The preliminary exam will determine if there's enough evidence for all three men to proceed with the trial that continues tomorrow. Researchers at the University of Michigan have found some groundbreaking new information about the COVID vaccines and minorities. That investigation funded by a big federal grant. Paula Tutman standing by to tell us the latest on how the money was spent and how you can get involved in the next step. Paula. Hey, Karen, we're talking about $1.4 million from the NIH. And, you know, grant money is literally gold uh, to researchers. And what these investigators found is that historic mistrust and vaccine hesitancy in minority communities, it's disappearing. And the real issue right now is access or lack thereof. Also, this team developed a way to get the public to basically take the mic to get the real message out there. My mask and pull down my shield. My often washed hands are too cracked to heal. People are creative and have stories to tell about their own experiences with the virus and the vaccine. Like waves on a Michigan shore. When the National Institute of Health granted a team at U of M $1.4 million to seek out and address COVID awareness, misinformation, and vaccine hesitancy in communities of color in Wayne, Washtenaw, Genesee, and Kent counties, by working with community centers and leaders across the state, they found an important shift that drives the study branded the fierce urgency of now communities conquering COVID or C3 was groundbreaking. We're seeing increased willingness and excitement around getting the vaccine in the community, but, but access is a challenge and we, we, can't, we can't blur those issues. We can't pretend that it's hesitancy when it's really access. While some numbers show about 18% of minorities still have some hesitancy, the investigators also found out it's not just the message that could make the difference, but the messenger. Rather than having experts sitting in an office somewhere come up with the messages, the idea is that the creative energy uh, for these messages and the ideas for the powerful messages exist out there in the community. And it's our job to to create a way for those to come to the surface and be viewed by people. And so they invited artists of all kinds to weigh in. Some wrote music. No, we can't talk at all, except on Zoom or a Facebook call. Some made cartoons and other animations. Some wrote poetry, but all told it like it is in their own way. This content is really, really creative. And this is where you come in because voting actually opens today. So anyone can vote on the content and, and the winner gets a small stipend, but also some of that grant money will be used so that 
their message can be turned into uh, public messaging, in other words, PSAs and things like that. And so, Karen, you know where you can find the link? On our social media platforms and click on Detroit.com. So I think people should really vote and decide what the messaging should be, and then you get a chance to actually participate. Love the idea and great creativity. Thank you, Paula. Still ahead here first at four, IKEA in legal trouble. The company's French subsidiary is going on trial on charges of spying. We're going to talk about who was allegedly targeted and also the possible penalties. And new damage control? Britain's royal family is reportedly thinking about a more aggressive approach to allegations of racism in the palace. First, life or death. The Supreme Court tackles the case surrounding the Boston Marathon bomber. It could be a tricky situation for President Joe Biden.